You might not know this about me, but I have a weird passion for fictional cars. I'm not even a car guy, I just like make-believe cars. Anyway, my favorite one is the Mighty Liner, driven by Zone Fighter. And so you can imagine how excited I was when I finally found a fairly priced, die-cast, miniature Mighty Liner to put with my other cars. And I was able to get this because of today's sponsor, Baiyi.jp, where you can browse Japanese shops and auction sites and make purchases through Baiyi just like you'd make a purchase on Amazon. Look, I also got these little Zone Fighter erasers. There he is, killing Gigan again. This might not mean much to you, but it means a lot to me, so I want you to find your version of this. What will your treasure be? Sign up for a Baiyi account using the link below. During the 1990s, there were more than a few versions of cute Godzillas running around Japan. The Bonpresto Godzilla had a ton of toys. There was Lit Goji for a few years. This one was nuts, it needs its own video. There was this style, which I'll refer to as Kanika art, simply because it often appeared on Kanika-related materials. It's also common to see the style as 90s Godzilla anniversary art. Then there was Godzilland, the tremendous, often abstract merchandise line that started in 1984. If you watched part one of this video and think you got it all figured out, let me tell you that 90s Godzilland is a whole different story, and we're gonna go through all the twists and turns right now. Stay with me, you'll be glad you did. Flight time! Yeah! In the early 1990s, Godzilland got restructured, with many of the characters getting makeovers. The brand was keeping up with the releases of Heisei-era Godzilla films, so new characters kept popping in too. But as exciting as a Godzilla and reboot was, it was also different than how the line ran in the 1980s. The days of endless tiny gifts, stickers, magnets, and pins, and all that stuff are behind us now. There was less art in general. In the 90s, each character had a couple of designated poses, and that's almost always how you found them. But the 1990s Godzilland got to be on TV. In 1992, a TV series aired on TV Tokyo in Japan called Adventure Godzilland. The series was made to promote the new Godzilla vs. Mothra film, and each episode was roughly 15 minutes of trivia games, clips from the movie, and actors from the film. In 1993, they did it again, this time to promote the new film Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. The show would also feature some animated segments that included monsters in their Godzilla and styles. The show also aired a song called Godzilla Sofa Mi Re Do, which encouraged kids to get some more physical activity in their lives. This show also featured these still image comic strip like segments, which sort of look like Godzilla and art, but not totally like Godzilla and art. I bring these up because these segments featured some interesting guest appearances, such as Maguma and Mechani Kong, and here's King Kong. Most episodes of Adventure Godzilla and are now lost media, so who knows what other characters or animations appeared. In 1994, Godzilla and would finally get its own dedicated animated OVAs. The first two episodes of Get Going Godzilla and were released on VHS by Gakken, serving as educational videos for young children, with the first video being about learning hiragana, and the second being about learning how to count. <laughs> And I think here's a good point to go over the change in the monster lineup and their styles from the original 1980s Godzilla and, as well as the change in the overall lore. We'll start with Godzilla, who is virtually identical, as is King Ghidorah. Okay, that was easy. Mechagodzilla, Baragon, Mogira, and Gigan also look about the same. Rodan got more defined spikes on his belly and a new beak. And now the points on the back of his head stick higher up, too. Ian Gurus got a major overhaul. He's less dog-like and more personified like everyone else. His head spikes are different and his snout isn't curving anymore. I'd say the biggest changes happened to Mothra and her larva. As you can see, the new Mothra is a total rework, with more focus on giving her limbs that can act as traditional arms and legs. 
New Mothra looks kind of like a Sonic character, but she's definitely able to be a lot more expressive this way. And look at the young! Put this design against the original Godzilla Land, and it's night and day. Needless to say, the new larvae are much more screen accurate. Manila got dumped from the lineup. Yeah, he didn't make it into the 1990s. Here's a very likely reason for that. In the 1980s, the Godzilla and characters were very age ambiguous, but Godzilla would often be seen doing adult things, such as driving a car. Now in the 1990s, it is made crystal clear that they are all children. Yeah, they are all about five or six years old now, so this is like Muppet Babies. Which means no Manila. He's not even, he's not even a fetus yet. ebra has gone this time around too, so sorry Ibra stands. And last, and this one hurts me, there's no more Hedora! She was one of my favorite from the original line. I, I, I'm perplexed as to why Hedora didn't get to go into the 90s. In 1996, two more OVAs were released, Addition and Subtraction. These two included a revised intro. In this new opening, you can also spot an ornament of a Mysterian on Mogira's umbrella. The show's format was also tweaked in these two episodes. Now, they were bookended with a live-action segment, including Godzilla and a girl he's referring to as Onechan, which can mean dear older sister, although not necessarily biologically a sister. In these segments, it's presented as though Godzilla is reflecting on his childhood. A new character has also been added to these second two OVAs, a pink female Godzilla known as Gojirin, or often known by American fans as Godzilla. Unfortunately, these two OVAs would be the only official appearance of Gojirin to date. If she appears on any of the 90s Godzilla and art or merch, I haven't seen it. As for Godzilla and merch, this time around there is an intense focus on stationery, both for school and at the office. The merch will also give us a good look at some characters who weren't in the Godzilla and OVAs, but did appear in the Adventure Godzilla and segments. This includes a new Heisei version of Mecha Godzilla, who differs greatly from his Showa counterpart. Both of these Mecha Godzillas were in regular rotation in the 90s. Get this, even the Garuda made it to Godzilla and, which means we got an official Godzilla and Super Mecha Godzilla. Now that's cool. Mecha King Ghidorah started appearing on merch as well, and the implications of that are head scratching. Does this mean at some point in time, Godzilla and Ghidorah's middle head got cut off? At the top of the video, I mentioned how Godzilla and had to share the 1990s with some other SD Godzilla art styles. One of those styles is this here, which I'll call the Kanaka style, and I'm bringing this up again because I want you to take note of the Kanaka style Destoroya. Because around the mid-1990s, this art started appearing for Godzilla vs. Destroya. It features Kanaka-style Burning Godzilla, Kanaka-style Junior, but this is not the Kanaka-style Destroya, this is godzilla style! I don't know why this art mixes two styles, but I have it in a lot of places. Stickers, a mouse pad, even an apron. As far as I know, this is the only place Godzilla and Destroya makes an appearance. Just like in the 1980s, some vehicles made it to the lineup. I already showed you the Garuda, but we also have the Super X. And we have some Mazer Cannons. And that UFO is still hanging around. And we're about to take a quick break, but first, some playtime trivia. We're talking a lot about chibi Godzillas that were running around in the 1990s. Here's one version you might have seen before. Which artist did this here chibi Godzilla art? A. Koji Yokoi B. Shinji Nishikawa C. Art Adams Or D. Yuji Kaeda The answer soon. I like when the bumper is longer than the commercial break itself. The artist who did the chibi Godzilla art you're looking at here is Shinji Mash Nishikawa, one of my favorites. But let's get back to the Godzilla and art. Going back to the stationery I mentioned earlier, there are all kinds of cool art sets and color pencil sets with the art branded as Godzilla and. Like this notebook here. Let's check out these little guys parading at the bottom. 
And here's some really cool pencils. And check out this Godzilla art on them. You might have noticed they don't have erasers. Well, for that, you have this. It looks like a pen, but the whole thing's an eraser. A Godzilla branded eraser. Here's another box of pencils with a different type of lead, and these boxes are just the best place to get a look at Mecha King Ghidorah. Like, check out this tin holding a colored pencil set. The art looks great here. It's clear and vibrant. There's another little Godzilla hiding inside. No art on the pencils themselves this time. Here's another set. These are just so gorgeous. There were some stickers. Here's a few character stickers I have. And Godzilla and art got mixed in with other styles of arts for pins and badges. So it's out there, but it's probably not going to be clearly labeled. Hey, but the Godzilla and art did get to be used on this one sheeter about conserving energy and investing in renewable energies. Even the Godzilla and characters are trying to save the Earth. You might have noticed this already, but there isn't much consistency for when this art is used for Godzilla and, and when it's labeled as just Godzilla. And this brings us to the office supplies by Yutaka, which uses the Godzilla and art, but brand it simply as Godzilla. Oh boy, oh boy, where do we begin? How about three and a half floppy disk labels? Do half of you even know what I'm talking about right now? Clean your disc tray with the only disc tray cleaner endorsed by a cute Godzilla. Here I have not one, not two, but three Godzilla brand mouse holders, each in different colors. So when you're not using your Godzilla brand computer mouse, what you do is rest it in this cup sticking on the side of your desk with command tape. But look though, our Godzilla and friends are all right there on the box. Mouse is super cool, I love it. There's a keyboard out there too, that I do not have. Labels, Godzilla labels for your mail or whatever. Floppy disk labels, giant envelope labels. See, paperwork doesn't have to be dull. Actually, I like these, Godzilla and VHS labels. In 1996, NEC held some type of promotion that offered this floor seat with Godzilla and art on it. I can't find this seat anywhere to buy, but man, I want it. I've got all sorts of character-shaped notepads here. I've got Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, and Mothra. I'm not sure if this is all of them. Godzilla and Art made it to the tags of these Bonpresto plushies. These are cool stuffed toys, but I'm fairly certain the toys themselves are not meant to be made in Godzilla and style. Godzilla might be a little ambiguous, as is King Ghidorah, I guess, but you can see it most with Mothra. But check it out, these toys do all have movie-accurate roars. Godzilla and Art also appears on this box for this Tomy Charmy water toy. Again, it doesn't look like the product itself was made with Godzilla and style in mind, but the art made it to the packaging all the same. Check out this Godzilla anniversary pennant. Big, beautiful images of Godzilla and characters. And there's that Kanika slash anniversary art mixed in there again. But one of the coolest things I have for 90s Godzilla and is this magic cube, also by Yutaka. It's like a Rubik's cube, but the whole side with Godzilla needs to be in a specific order to make this picture. There's great Godzilla and art on the other sides, including this art of Mecha King Ghidorah standing. This is the only place I've seen him in this pose. Maybe I should just twist the cube a little bit and get it all kind of jumbled up. I can't do it. I can't. I cannot do it. Here's a strange story. From 1996 to 1997, an animated series called Godzilla Kingdom aired on TV Tokyo. Each episode was around 3 minutes and 15 seconds long, and they featured a woman known only as Doctor and her little sidekick named Megabyte and they'd spend the show analyzing and discussing Godzilla and the other monsters. I bring up Godzilla Kingdom because of its intro. It seems to have reused the Godzilla and intro, but with new credits, right into the end when the new title card lands and new stars of the show pop out. So now you know about Megabyte. 
But I think the next story is a good note to go out on because it's basically Godzilla and Tokusatsu Endgame. This event is so massive, it was called the biggest decisive battle hero festival in history. The first Hero Fest was held in Ikebukuro in August of 1996, with another occurring in Mitsu, Greenland the following year. Hero Festival 96 was a giant toku celebration featuring Godzilla and various Ultras and Riders and Super Sentai characters. There was a stage show, a stage show where heroes and villains from across all of these properties appeared together. A lot of the publicity art for Hero Fest 96 features the characters in their super deformed forms. And for characters like King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Godzilla, that means they're Godzillaand forms. And it's really fun to think about the Godzillaand universe now officially crossing over with these other properties. In fact, I have this set of commemorative pins from the event. And honest to God, this is one of my favorite things in my entire collection. As far as I know, Godzilla Land didn't make it into the 2000s, but it was not entirely forgotten. For example, in 2018, artist Jorge Corona created a Godzilla Land style Reptar. This homage graced the cover of Kaboom's Rugrats Volume 1 FYE exclusive variant. Artist David DeGrand has provided the world with Godzilla and Shin Godzilla, simultaneously horrifying and adorable. Matt Frank has showed us what a realistic Gojiran might look like. As of this video, there are a few cute Godzilla campaigns happening at once. There's Chibi Godzilla, which started as a toddler-friendly Godzilla, but has been nudged into a Toho mascot spot since. And there's also Monster Puppet Show Gojiban which started in 2019 and is still going strong as of this video. Godzilla Land is long gone, and the burden of keeping even just its memory alive rests solely on us fans now. With all those aforementioned chibi campaigns, I can't imagine Godzilla Land returning, but stranger things have happened. For example, in the early 2000s, Godzilla and Hamtaro had crossover merchandise to promote their movie double features. It ran for a few years and ended, but now it's back! Brand new Godzilla and Hamtaro merch is available as I write this. I never in a million years thought this campaign would return, so who knows? Maybe Godzilla and Will too. I do know that I would be thrilled to be one day sitting here on your screen doing a third Godzilla and video. Until then, let's just keep sharing the art, making new art, and hoping one day someone notices.